ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros. We got a heavyweight fight coming up on April 24th between Christian Neymar or Yella versus Thomas Adamick, okay? Um, let's break it down. Let's see exactly what's going to happen in this fight and what's my prediction. Well, you got Thomas Adamick who is, uh, some would consider the smaller guy. I don't know if you really honestly want to say he's a smaller guy because he is a tall guy and he's a big dude that uh, couldn't make cruiserweight anymore, decided to move up. Uh, made a lot of noise in the cruiserweight division, but really honestly was clearly outboxed by guys that had more athleticism, had more speed, and were able to really use their footwork like, you know, Steve Cunningham, and then he had um, Ted Dawson. And by moving up, he had, you know, going up in heavyweight, he went against Galata, uh, he KO'd Galata, then he, he went after Estrada, and uh, he had some success. He was having some problems there, but really honestly, if you look at that fight, it was almost kind of uh, Estrada being a, not a very big heavyweight, more of a smaller guy. I think that even Estrada, if he went down to cruiserweight, he'd probably have more success than facing bigger guys. But, you know, uh, Thomas Adamick seemed to be in the same position he was at when he was a cruiserweight. He was chasing down a guy, uh, a guy that was slick and was able to you know use good footwork a little faster and, and he always has to put in the work to try to you know close the distance and cut the ring off and land the heavier shots and exactly what he did now He's getting in with a guy really is not no cutie in the ring. Uh, Kristen Nightmare Oriella is a guy that comes forward, throws volumes of punches, is a big puncher, you know, and is a big heavyweight. This is not a small guy, okay? This is not a guy that decided to move up. He started his career as a heavyweight and he's going to be ending his career as a heavyweight. So, what do we look at? Well, the last time we saw Chris, he was in with uh, Patelli Kalisco and uh, he gave a great effort for 10 rounds, but really honestly just uh, was pretty much getting outboxed by the champion at that time. You know, he was getting jabbed, getting caught. Uh, Chris pressured. Chris kept going, showed true, true heart, but heart wasn't enough. And, uh, you know, we, we saw the outcome, you know, was stopped by his corner, which was the right thing to do because uh, Chris is still a young, strong heavyweight and still got potential of really trying to capture a heavyweight bout in the division. So now he's going to get a shot at Thomas Adamick. Now, Right away, if you look at the paper and if you've seen Chris Nymer or Yella, you're going to go, well, Chris does. He has all the advantages. You know, he's a big guy, comes forward, throws a lot of shots, and he's got a good jaw. Okay? Um, then you look at Adamick, but you got to look at Adamick and, and you go, well, he's a smaller guy. You know, and he's had problems. But the guys he has problems with are guys that really honestly are, to, are outmaneuvering him. You know, where, you know, this is honestly going to be the first time he's going to step into the ring with a guy that's actually going to come forward and collide with him. And that's what honestly makes this fight such an intriguing fight fight is that he's going to have a guy, you're going to have two guys that don't take backward steps. They're just going to come forward. Now, is it a really the smartest thing for Adamick to do against Chris the Nightmare? I would say no. You know, the smart thing would be is to really look at what, what Vitaly did, which is use footwork. You know, Vitaly Kalisco looked like a featherweight when he stepped into Staples Stadium uh, to face Chris the Nightmare. You know, he was using footwork. He was getting out of there. He was using the jab. He made sure he had never got caught up in the ropes. He made sure he never allowed Chris to close the distance. You know, he made sure Chris didn't do an inside game because as big as Chris is, he's got good inside, you know, punching ability. So, Adam really honestly, he's got to try to keep this fight at bay. He's got to become Chad Dawson. He's got to become Steve Cunningham. He's got to do things that he's never done before against Chris to be successful. You know, he, you know, some guys have criticized uh, Chris's physique, you know, but when have you ever seen Chris tire out? You know, as big as he is, you know, you know, he comes in, you know, guys are like, oh, he's out of shape, but even because he looks out of shape, I've never seen him fight out of shape. You know what I'm saying? There's a big difference, you know? You can look out of shape, but the guy, honestly, doesn't gas out. He throws volumes and volumes of punches, okay? Even when the 10 rounds going with Vitelli Kalisco, did you... I, I didn't see him one at one time, you know... Take a deep breath and slow down. He just keep doing the same momentum. You know, it wasn't success. It wasn't the most successful moment momentum for him, but he keep going forward. Where Adamick has got to see that. He's got to understand. Look, I'm going against a guy that's not going to tire out. He may ha 
have may not have the David Hay body or the Klitschko's body, but he definitely he's got something else, which is he's got that road rage, man. When he's in that ring, you know, when he's in that when he gets in that ring, he's got road rage. He, if you're in his way, he's gonna run right all over you. Okay, so what do you do against a bull? Well, you move out of the way, step aside, and let him just run on by, and then you counter. That's exactly what Adam has got to do. He's got to step aside, counter, step aside, counter. He's got to keep making angles and keep turning and turning them and not allowing Chris to be able to sit down and throw them shots and really honestly those uppercuts he likes to throw and even, you know, Chris likes to get in the inside and mix it up. He's got to make sure, you know, Adam has got to discipline himself so much in this fight that he's going to be able to outbox him. Now, what's my prediction? It's a lot harder to do that, that to be done because you know when you're used to running a particular way or you got a certain swagger in your walk or you talk a particular way or you just have a certain way about yourself you know when you start off doing you're gonna end up doing that always you know it's 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 you rarely ever see fighters you know change a style you know uh, um, the only fighter come to my mind right now was Marco Antonio uh, Marco Antonio Barrera he was a, a, a brawler and then he switched over to a boxer puncher you know it's really difficult for fighters to really turn their lives around not their lives there's a lot their fight style around and adjust now can it be done of course but that's what you call self-discipline we don't know exactly how disciplined you know Adam it can be he may not go I don't see that's a good game plan with me the good game game plan for me would be go forward into Chris you know to show to get respect now if that happens that obviously is gonna work out for Chris you know because that's what Chris wants Chris wants you to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them he doesn't want to be able to he doesn't want to, have to look for you, you know uh, Chris doesn't want to have to go look for his lunch he wants to make sure his lunch is right there to be eaten and if Adam Mick does that guess what he's gonna be there to be gobbled up by Chris the nightmare because if that's one thing about Chris that guy likes to fight he, he likes to come he likes to throw punches he likes to be hit you know and, and he wants to show the fa fight fans and exciting fight you know I really don't uh, um, I don't really see Adam uh, um, being successful with that fight plan you know because uh, like I said you know he's fighting a guy it's not a guy that really I mean he's a big guy strong guy and uh, if if Adam X camp were looking at all the pros and cons about that bat belt they would look at that when well, you got a big strong durable fast pace throws a lot of shots when you when you're in the pocket with him we don't want to do that. We want to be able to go around that. You know, the art of war is go around it. You know, give them a surprise attack. The surprise attack would be giving them angles and making sure your back doesn't touch those ropes. Anyway, so my prediction is uh, I would have to say Chris and I, my Earl Yellow, I'm going to go maybe five or six rounds, I think, you know, because I really don't see, I see the, the, the Poland fighter having too much pride to try to back up and run. You know, he's going to come forward and he's going to try to do, you know, something that nobody's done is knock out Chris and I, my Earl Yellow. So I'm going to say, Chris gets successful, but we're going to see a great, exciting fight. That's what I see in this fight. Uh, I'm your host, Dave Duenas. This was an ad another edition of The Will Be Blood.